So I'd like to spend the next uh, few minutes telling you a little bit about the Anlinger Center and some of the logistics about uh, this meeting. Um, the Anlinger Center, uh, as many of you may know, was established in July of 2008, thanks to an extraordinary gift from Princeton alumnus and international business leader Gerhard Anlinger. The center has three core areas of research. So we would like the center to support a vibrant research and teaching program with a focus on three things, developing new alternative energy sources, improving the efficiency of devices that consume and generate energy today, and inventing and improving carbon capture and storage techniques that will enhance our ability to reduce the amount of CO2 entering the atmosphere. So these are three broad themes. The center aims at pursuing these studies closely with scientists and policy analysts across the university. And this is very important, with an eye towards translating fundamental knowledge into practical solutions. This is built into the core mission of the center. We envision the center to be located in what we call a neighborhood, energy and environment neighborhood, which will comprise the E-wing of the engineering school, Bowen Hall, which is where the Prism Center uh, stands, and the Carfield Center, which will move across the street, whereas uh, we, we intend to have a, a very nice conference center in that location associated with the Anlinger Center. And there will be, very importantly, a state-of-the-art facility a major theme will be within the center will be to bring together the finest minds in energy and environmental science with those who work on new materials. This was a strategic choice that Princeton made to capitalize on an existing strength. For example, to develop flexible solar panels or to develop heat resistance coatings that will enable power plants to operate more efficiently. And you're going to hear about both of these themes today. So accordingly, the new center will host a state-of-the-art facility, a shared facility that will have state-of-the-art imaging and nanofabrication facilities in addition to individual investigator labs. Because of the focus on translating fundamental knowledge into practical solutions, close interactions with industry will be, to, from day one, fundamental to the existence of the center. And planning for the new building therefore includes space for industrial collaboration laboratories as well as for hosting industrial visitors for extended periods of time. We selected the architects in January, uh, Todd Williams and Billy Seen, a firm, a New York based firm, and we're in the middle of the design process for the center. The search committee has identified a candidate for the director of the center and we're now in the middle of negotiations, trying to attract this person to Princeton. So we're very excited. We're sort of in the, in the quiet but very active phase. A lot of things are happening. Speaking about the director, uh, in, 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 in going with the theme of the importance of industrial contacts, the director will consult with two external advisory boards. One will be focused on scientific issues and will be primarily but not exclusively academic. And the other board will be focused on strategic and policy concerns and will be mostly composed of people from industry. In addition, the director will oversee the recruiting of new faculty to the center, will oversee the development of the energy and environment neighborhood, provide leadership of research, educational, and outreach activities, and also, very importantly, allocate a non-trivial amount of funds for innovative research internally at Princeton. So, Today's meeting is the first of what we hope to be many meetings. And when we thought about the format, of course, we didn't know what sort of response we would get. We got a very good response. And so we have to cram everyone into just 10 minutes. So the format will be talks. We have two coffee breaks and a reception for people to mingle and, and follow up. We want the industrialists to hear about the exciting research going on here and programs that exist. And we want the academics to hear about the needs and interests in industry. And hopefully, the two coffee breaks and the reception will allow for plenty of opportunity for people to talk. If time allows and we're doing OK with the uh, timing, right before the reception, we'll also have a little bit of open discussion. But if you don't have enough of structured discussion, 
please be proactive. Contact the faculty members or the faculty members, contact the industrial members whose presentations you're interested in. And be aware that this is just the first of many forums that we intend to organize. Um, this is all I wanted to say, so it gives me great pleasure to introduce uh, Greg Olson, who is my partner in crime in organizing this. Greg is a lecturer in the Electrical Engineering Department and, of course, is president and founder of GHO Ventures. Jeff? Thank you.